Grandpa Newbie reporting for duty with another bare bones test of a weapon. Now the HMR9 is one that I get gacked by a lot. A lot of people like running the HRM9 and it's a pretty powerful weapon, pretty efficient SMG. So I thought I'd take all the attachments off of it and see how it performs just with factory settings. So Grandpa took the factory setting HRM9 onto the field of honor. Let's see how it did for Grandpa and what it did to Grandpa's enemies. While we're waiting for our first free-for-all, let's take a look at the numbers. You can see that the recoil is the place we need to target with configuration. It's going to be tough with the bare bones. Horizontal, not so much, but the gun kick and vertical recoil. Now, the configuration did handle that. Red is bad for the bare bones and good for the configured. We had the unintended consequence of harming the aim down sight speed with the configuration, but it, it didn't harm it too badly about one frame. And the ADS movement speed, sprint to fire speed is a bit better for the, for the uh, bare bones. So you can see that bullet velocity was also an unintended improvement for the HMR9 configuration target flinch you'll see that we had an extra slot so we put in overpressured rounds and effective damage range the configuration improved that over bare bones so let's have a look at what the bare bones did with the recoil and everything and targeting singly the recoil i just wanted to make sure that i didn't harm too badly the ads movement speed the strafe speed the ADS speed, the sprint to fire speed in the range. So the range was actually improved. The ADS speed slightly impacted and the ADS movement speed is almost the same, a bit impacted by configuration. It was the recoil we were targeting. So let's take a trip to Tokyo on free for all. Didn't start out too purely for Grandpa. There's a guy in a snowsuit. I don't know if it's that cold out, but we'll see. There's somebody that's laying on the wet pavement. I'm sure that's not legal in Tokyo. So in free for all, like I always say, I just try to build up angles and I try to get the lay of the land in terms of the lobby. These guys didn't seem to want much verticality, so I figured most of the battle was going to be on the ground. There's the snowsuit. He's got to be getting hot because I think it's a muggy, rainy night in Tokyo. There's snowsuit. He's peeking again, and he ran off, and so did Grandpa. Oh, dodge the grenade. Oh. That guy was really fast. He could run faster than most. Snowsuit is trying to melee Grandpa, which is really rude in a fresh lobby like this. You want to put your best foot forward and hitting somebody in the teeth with the butt of a gun is not a way. Look at those beds. That's a Tokyo hotel. Looks like a dog kennel. There's the first encounter with verticality and Grandpa gets gacked. So it's a pretty tight race. He's in third place, one behind. Fifth place now, two behind. There's Snowsuit Man. What on earth? Somebody's trying to shoot me in the back and he's just standing there and he, ah, what is he, dragging? He split, spit flames at Grandpa. There's the verticality, and I missed the jump. Snowsuit man is up there by himself. And I just decided to try to run up there and find him. Creeping. And that creeping was quite fortunate that time. Sniffing my fit and feet and creeping. 
probably have a restraining order ready for me. Or snowsuit man. Grandpa gets him, but somebody at Grandpa couldn't see. There's the fast mover. Somebody Grandpa couldn't see got him, and somebody stepped on a proximity mine. So the field's starting to separate. I'm three gacks down, and I'm in second place. So that happens in free for all. Everybody bunches at the top and for the first minute or so, and then we start to separate. It's my mosquito child. He's not supposed to kill me anymore. I don't know if they actually put that fix in or they just put it in the release notes as a placebo. Uh, there's the fast runner, and they stabbed Grandpa with a knife. guy waiting around the corner looks like he's uh, part of the yard maintenance although there's not a big yard here in Tokyo there's a tree now we're getting past 20 that's the what I consider the third try mister in free-for-all guy jumping for and grandpa just can't seem to open up a little there's the fast runner Somebody set Grandpa on fire. Just get keeps getting a gack, and somebody else keeps getting a gack. I'm not really sure who the king is right now because I haven't seen very many Kingslayer tags. There's the snowsuit man. So finally, with a double kill, we're tied. And then I find myself behind by three. Almost a, Somebody must have gotten a triple kill. There's the fast guy. Grandpa dies. Down by two with the game running out. Somebody only needs two more gacks to Grandpa's four. Now he only needs one more gack and I need four. So Grandpa better start that tax sprint going to find potential victims. There's Lucky 2. Guy tried to burn me again. And it's hard to die when you're... when the enemy's got 29, he only needs one more. That just uh, is a sinking feeling. There's Snowsuit Man. He's gone. So now all of a sudden I'm tied. Desperately looking for one more gack. One more kill before somebody else gets one. Oh, oldest trick in the book, and it worked on Snowsuit Man. Grandpa wins that one, and he gives a big hoo there. I'm excited on the inside, reticent like a fighter pilot on the outside. But I will rewatch that last bare bones kill. So yeah, everybody else was pretty separated. It was a guy named Deadpool. I think he was the fast runner that was close to me. I ran into him before. So we decided to do one more. When I say we, I mean me, myself, and I, the three of us. And we're on this infected map. And the proximity mine can act like an early warning device, even if it doesn't gack the enemy, early warning. So I did notice the recoil, I have to admit, I did notice the recoil on the first game. You can see the gun kick is significant, even though I'm expecting it. And there's not a lot you can do about the gun kick. The recoil that ensues is where you control the weapon. Yeah, I'm not gonna chow that guy. Somebody stepped in paint. There he is. Get a quick. Oh, it's unfortunate for him. So Grandpa's got a slight lead at the beginning, but like I said, it free for all tends to bunch up at the very beginning. And your status can change in 10 seconds. Somebody can get a trip kill or even a frenzy kill and. You're cruising along. Of course, shooting people in the back is the best way to advance in free-for-all. 
throw out one of those. Don't see anybody anywhere. Very few kills for the first few minutes of the game here. So I'm wondering, that that's usually an indicator that people are camping, but I just don't get the feeling they are. I just get the feeling we're passing each other in the dark where there's nobody there. Got the GAC there. Got another GAC. See a potential victim. And the strafe speed's good enough on the bare bones. In fact, it's better than my configured strafe speed. It's a pretty awesome 3.4 meters per second. And that worked out fine for me. Starting to build a lead here. But in free-for-all, unless you got a 5 GAC lead and 29 kills, don't rest on your laurels. Somebody walking in the door and somebody on the other door. Put out the mosquito, go do work, my child, and it did. It, it killed Control-Alt-Delete. I like seeing people that are into each other like that. Only have eyes for the other guy and they don't see me coming from the side to put a bullet in their eardrum. In a friendly way. I mean that in a kind way. Step on it, step on it. Nope, I got a crossfire. All right, we're halfway through. Somebody put out noxious gas. It reminds me of being in the fighter squadron in the ready room. There's always somebody putting out noxious gas. And I saw that guy run to the corner, so I decided to go ahead and chow him, even though I stepped over his proximity mine. There goes the Nux. And that time his proximity mine got me. I thought it'd be an easy kill. Of course, Afterlife, they got him too. Strafe Speed won that one for Grandpa. Start, we're in the third trimester of the free-for-all. And there's another back shot. Just make sure you get it. Another another back shot. And somebody's gotten to within one gack of Grandpa. He's going to have to step out again. You can see he is shaking with nerves. I can hardly sit in my seat. Double kills, they're always a good thing. Never have I gotten a double kill and thought, man, that's a bad thing that just happened to me. Another back shot. That's what building angles on people, constantly moving. You camping in free-for-all, you got seven people coming after you. But if you move, they don't know where you are. A quick build back up to four. You know, I can see why people like this weapon, because bare bones, it is powerful. It just absolutely deletes people shoot through the smoke there just need one more gack whoa somebody's up on the third floor camping up there and searching for the final victim i still have a two gack lead this is a reasonable weapon there he is right there to strafe him and thank you snoop i'll forever be a fan so overall, I think the HRM-9 bare bones is a fantastic weapon. I think configuring it is going to help with the recoil. We'll be releasing a video soon on that configuration and how it did. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Peace to you and cheers. And let me know how you like the HRM-9. See ya. Confirmed. Eliminate all hostiles in the area. Grab the tag. We've secured the lead. We have taken the lead. Confirm that one.
Mission accomplished.